Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you. How can it be that something that could be the most important experiences in many cultures is repeatedly perceived for us as a tragedy? What does death or to be dead mean to us? And could ayahuasca change in any way or transform our relation that we had with death and the disease? Eight years ago, my friend and colleague Xavi committed suicide, and since then, I've been interested in researching the potential of ayahuasca in grief therapy. So I would like to share some results of the investigations that we have done so far. We don't have the slides, isn't it? Okay. So, <laughs> in 2015, ICIRS and the Beckley Foundation joined forces to start an observational study at the Temple of the Way of Light. This is a center located in the Peruvian rainforest where they don't follow any specialized uh, program in bereavement, but they drink ayahuasca in a shipibo conibo ceremonial context. So we observe that the, the, the pain of the death of a loved one was significantly reduced in a very short period of time, in a maximum of one month where, where they perform up to nine ayahuasca ceremonies, in 50 Western non-religious bereavements that attended to the Temple of the Way of Light to resolve their grief problems. So, maybe can I push the... This is all what I... <laughs> ah, okay. I'm going to show you the, the graphs in order that you can see the, the data also, no? <clears throat> That's my friend. So, here you can see in this graph that this pain relief was significantly reduced after drinking ayahuasca and was maintained over one year. And we obtained also a high effect size at all time po point assessment. So, we also know that this pain relief was mediated partly because ayahuasca helped them to accept the irreversibility of the death, and probably later they could took some distance of those emotions and feelings and memories that were previously overwhelming. But we also know that that's not everything. We also know that ayahuasca can activate many other psychological mechanisms that must be investigated, and not only to relieve the pain of a loss, but also to grow as human beings despite the loss of a loved one. And we know that in part because in a previous study, we analyzed the reports of 30, uh, 30 mourners who drank ayahuasca after the death of a loved one. And from those reports, uh, many other psychological mechanisms can be deduced, such as, for example, the postmortem attachment style with the disease. As we are part of a very materialistic society, it's very difficult for us to understand that the relation with the disease can change over time because we understand that the disease no longer exists. But that's not the reality of the mourners. One of the core principal symptoms of the prolonged grief disorder is the persistent preoccupation with the disease. So this bone of connection between the, 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 the deaths and the mourners and the livings continue existing beyond death. But how is this bone of connection? Is there sadness? Is there anger, guilt, peace? This, this bone of connection clearly depends on the internal representation that we have about the disease, what has been called the internal working model of the disease, and about the, the, the internal representation that we have about ourselves seen from the eyes of the disease, what has been called the internal representation of the self. And ayahuasca has an enormous potential to transform these internal representations. So we are now developing the first scale to assess the postmortem attachment style with the disease because something so, so central and so important in grief has not been even conceived yet in grief literature. So I'm going to share with you an example. 
many participants report how during the ayahuasca effects, they were reunited with the essence, the presence, the energy or the soul of the disease, open a new opportunity to be with them, to resolve the potential unfinished business, and to, in many cases, to transform the previous notion that they had about death and the disease. So this participant uh, says, this, this patient um, lost his ex-girlfriend in a car accident, and he says, when I was in the session, she appeared in my mind. Then I start to feel her coming as if she came from far away. I felt her presence or her energy, and I am usually very skeptical of these sort of things, but during the ayahuasca experience, it's not possible to be a skeptical. I did not hear words or see her image, but I could sense that she was telling me that she was fine, that she had come to tell me goodbye, and I cry a lot, I kiss the ground, I told her that I love her, and I let her go. After that experience, I started to accept her departure and understand that she is now in another dimension. So these kind of experiences clearly transform our internal representation of the disease. Instead of thinking of the tragedy of the accident in her precious body shattered by the accident, after drinking ayahuasca, she, he thinks that she continue existing in one way or another, that she is okay, so they can continue loving each other. So there is a transformation from a negative representation of the disease to a positive transformation. In, and, and this clearly changed the bone of connection from a diminished uh, attachment style, which is the one that conceals grief symptoms by prolonging them in time, to a secure bone of connection that predicts grief adaptation. Can you see the powerful I impact of ayahuasca in brief bereavement? Well, here is the, <laughs> the, the, the model, no? So, Finally, we also know that the potential of ayahuasca in complicated grief patients can be enhanced in, within a framework of constructive psychotherapeutic sessions. Because ayahuasca can evoke these powerful experiences that we have already seen, and the constructivist framework provides a map and a widely studied techniques to integrate these experiences to assimilate and accommodate this information to our understanding of ourselves, the others, and the world. It provides, uh, uh, it helps us to, to, to make a deeper meaning of these experiences and to anchor these experiences in our biographical story in order to maximize and to prolong the benefits of psychedelics over time. Yeah? So, <clears throat> A few months ago, we concluded the, the, the first pilot study to treat seven patients with ayahuasca and seven patients with allotropic breath work within a framework of 16 psychotherapeutic sessions. And as you can see in this graph, the, the complicated grief symptoms were significantly reduced after treatment, but the ayahuasca impact in the, in the ayahuasca group was a really high effect size, you know, a, a, a really high impact, almost more than twice than in the holotropic group. And this uh, uh, relief of the symptoms was maintained over six months follow-up, where only two patients were above the minimal score to be considered complicated grief. So this uh, results encourage us enough to make a step forward and to continue researching the potential of ayahuasca in grief tre treatment. So now we are, in this moment, a new protocol to, to treat more than 200 people is in the ethical committee of, the, of Barcelona, of the German Trias Hospital in Barcelona. So in this, if everything is okay, patients will pay with the constructivist therapy 
and we will find findings to pay the cost of the ayahuasca ceremonies and the integration sessions. So now going back to the beginning of this talk, I would like to highlight one important quality that ayahuasca ceremonies bring us to our Western uh, understanding to face death and to resolve grief in, in our countries. That is that ayahuasca allows us to move through the mystery Along the civilizations and the story of cultures, human beings have displayed what could be one of their greatest virtues, that is the ability to imagine. And we can see here, no, in, in Burning Man. And together they have co-created paradises, hells, sacred labyrinths, and many other non-material places to expand and enrich and to project the <clears throat> life of human beings. However, Western countries, deeply materialistic and empiristic, has rejected the historical weight of religion, abolishing the slightest imaginative flash under the crushing weight of rationalism. Not having any data that confirms the objective existence of the, all those places that could accommodate us after death, we have despised <clears throat> any kind of belief without realizing that we were assuming another kind of belief, that is that when the body dies, there's nothing, that consciousness is dissolved in an unimaginable nothingness. But after decades of scientific research on consciousness, obsessive scientific research, we still don't have any nanodata that confirm us that consciousness is a byproduct of our brain or of our own body or that is even located within us. So every person who is guided by a scientific method had to honestly admit that while we ignore the nature and the origin of consciousness, death will always be the greatest mystery that we all have to face sooner or later. And ayahuasca allows us to move through the mystery, but it doesn't do so through the, by the imposition of any cultural belief or a dogma or a no, it does it, evoking us a unique and authentic personal experience. Ayahuasca allows the mystery to unfold us with a total creative freedom, and that all our entire body, every inch of our guts, can experience what is moved through the multiple landscape of the soul, where the nothingness doesn't exist, where everything is alive, and where the mountains and the fire breathe, and the deaths comfort the grief of the mourners. So, I'm completely fascinated with this structure at Barney Man, with its meaning, its function, its values, and I hope one day these sacred places can be built in our cities and go there to cry, to pray, and to drink ayahuasca with our family, with our friends and communities, and then to move through the mystery of the dead during all the night and to reconnect with those who have gone in this way, when the first, line, first light of the sun rises, we can appreciate the mystery of death and the mystery of life with this double vision, with a greater depth of perception. Thank you very much. Okay, we have time for about 10 minutes of questions. Do we have any questions for Deborah? Sorry. Hey, Dr. Deb here. Um, at the very beginning, I couldn't hear you very well. Did you say that you had, there was a syndrome? I, I didn't hear that, or that you were studying something that's related to the, the grief. I wasn't sure what you said in the first five minutes. Yes. I'm, I'm going to ask to, to my, my husband that helped me because my English is terrible. 
and I want to to uh, to answer well these questions. Yeah, she wanted to know in the beginning. Yes, no, at, at the beginning I was talking about the ability to to see beyond the material and the the the, the facts and our material world. That about the, the ability to, to see beyond this material world. Because we are a very materialistic society, but that's not in everywhere in the world, and it has not been always like this, you know. And this materialistic vision uh, give us lack of meaning many times when we lose someone. And this disability to imagine is something that nature has give us. So it's something that we can develop and, and, and these tools as psychedelics give us this possibility to move through the imagination. I, and I say imagination in order to, to talk about a concept, but is to move through beyond the material world. Yeah? I'm curious with the ayahuasca, my experience around entheogens and death was not so much that they uh, eliminated any of the process that I needed to experience. They certainly gave me a reframe. Primarily for me it was with Iboga, but certainly gave me a reframe and allowed for the vastness of the full breadth of the experience. But it, there was still very much like the deep grieving process that was necessary so I'm curious if it, that's not what you're talking about when you're talking about elimination of symptoms, right? You're talking about just being able to connect with the fullness of the experience, yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the sadness and the, the many times the emptiness uh, is not possible to avoid and is not the, the objective to avoid, you know? Because it's something that you are going to lose forever the, the physical presence to make a hug to 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 give a kiss not to take her but um this deep uh, pain can be um canalized into a personal growth into a honoring um attitude in instead of of being sad and to close the your room at the house, you can make something deeper and to to honor this this person. So all these deaths are an, a beautiful opportunity to make a personal growth and to to honor this imprint that this person have make as a, as a gift, isn't it? <laughs> So for your pilot study, you talked about the 14 participants um, who took ayahuasca with constructivist psychotherapy. Can you talk to the specifics of that psychotherapy and the treatment for it? Was it an ongoing counseling or psychotherapy process? Then they took the ayahuasca, then was there further counseling? Like, what are the specifics on that treatment? Thank you very much for this question. Huh? I didn't have time enough to explain everything, but this is the most important thing. No? Um, there is an, an specific protocol to treat grief in constructivist framework. First is to, to go um, to, to make a, to retell in the narrative of the death in order that if is, is there any trauma can be processed before going beyond that. That the second part is to, to create a bone of connection, a secure bone of connection with the disease. Um, that is to retelling the, the story of the relationship, the back story. So what we did in this exploratory research is to um, begin with this protocol to, to at the beginning to tr make three sessions of retelling the narrative of the dead and 
in some patients, some patients um, with ayahuasca, just two patients of seven out of seven, uh, they it was like an exposure uh, therapy. You know, they begin to relief ev to to review everything even the things that they didn't feel in that moment, you know, to see things that they didn't see. It. So it was really, really hard. And uh, after that, um, we, we talk about the, the relation of the disease and the, the preparation that we had for these experiences is for when there is guilt, we said, uh, can you write a letter of the, for the disease in order to explain what are you feeling and what are you doing and you can bring to the ceremony and if you want you can put in the fire all instead that this emerge during the session but something that is important is not to focus in in what they don't want to do for example i want to forget my father for always forever this is not going to work ever you know this a letter of uh, i'm going to say you goodbye forever no you have to be always focused in what you want you know because in, in other in other cases like to uh, i don't want to think in this pink elephant i don't want to think in this elephant no, it's not going to work never you know so <clears throat> this this second uh, part um, is, is focused in, in having in, in create this secure point of connection with the disease. And some of the patients also, the, 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 the ones who have the most important therapeutic impact are the ones who have this kind of experiences that we have seen before, where they connect with the disease and they can resolve the unfinished business. So there are two patients that told me, Deborah, I don't need anything else about this experience. For me, the treatment is gone, is finished because I we we always say, pick a photograph of your mother or your loved one to the ceremony in order to be in contact with them. And and one of one of them, <coughs> for example, she told me. Uh, I don't want to show you this photograph because it's full of tragedy, you know. And I don't want to show you. And after the session, she show me and she told me look she is smiling you know so after seeing the tragedy there in the in this internal representation she can see her mother like you know so this 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 is the powerful to to change the internal representation of them and this is what they are going to the, the mechanism of action to transform this relation that they had with the, the disease so I can I can explain you more about that eh, after that. <laughs> yes. We have time for one more question. Yeah, yeah. What, one more. One more. Okay. Your Hi. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you. What a beautiful talk. Um, I used to run the therapeutic department at Crossroads Ibogaine Clinic in Mexico. And so I wanted to know, um, I, I get asked often for people, like, where are specific clinics or centers they can go to that have specialized programs? And if the Temple of the Way of Light or another, you know, are there any other suggestions of places that are doing these ongoing kind of grief protocols with uh, um, the therapy that you were talking about? Thank you. I'm going to check with him if I have understand you very well. No, no, I, I, I don't know at this time. Huh? Uh, and I cannot recommend you any place where I didn't have been before, you know. So um, I, I cannot give you these tips, you know. But, but for sure that there are uh, many, uh, there are a group of therapists that we are training in how to deal with all those with with grief and with psychedelics so uh, for the integration the, there are people who can help with that okay thank you very much deborah can we have a hand <laughs>